the first thing we want to train our ears to do is to recognize intervals. Intervals are the building blocks of melody and harmony. So in the next few videos, we will practice identifying intervals, starting with a few and gradually adding more and more until we cover all the intervals in an octave. In this video, we will start with perfect intervals, namely the perfect fourth, perfect fifth and perfect octave. We're not going to bother with the perfect unison. So we want to be able to recognize melodic intervals played ascending or descending and harmonic intervals played simultaneously. Now, there are two primary ways to do this. First, in my previous video, I encouraged you to learn how to sing the major scale a cappella from any note. So if you can do this relatively confidently, you should be able to sing up to the fourth, fifth or octave. For example, Bum, 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 bum. So that's a fourth. So I played an interval, I then sang that interval, and I then sang the major scale from the lower notes up until I hit the higher notes, um, and thus determined that it was a fourth. Then I sang that interval again, and there you go, it is a perfect fourth interval. And the second common way to do this is by using a mnemonic device in the form of song melodies. So we can memorize songs for each interval, so that when we hear an interval, we can test that interval against a number of likely songs to find the solution. Now, these are the songs that I use. For a perfect fourth, I use Amazing Grace, Perfect fifth, I use Twinkle Twinkle, and Perfect octave, I use Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Now, each of these songs starts with each of those intervals, which makes it handy to test our interval against. Now, you can, of course, use different songs. Ideally, you should use songs that you know relatively well and can kind of hum or sing. So it doesn't have to be these, but these are good options to start. So to start, a good exercise is to practice singing each of these intervals from random notes by using these songs. So play a random note on your instrument, sing the start of each of these songs to find your relevant interval, and then check it against your instrument. Bum, amen. Cool, so that was a fourth. Bum, twinkle, twinkle. Cool, that was relatively accurate, and that was a fifth. And finally, somewhere. There you go, and there's your perfect octave with the beginning of Somewhere Over a Rainbow. So you can practice singing each one of these intervals on your own at home by using these songs as cues. And then when you need to recognize an interval, you can just test it against these few songs. So I would listen to the interval, sing the interval, and then test it against one of the songs. Bum, bum, twinkle, twinkle. See, that doesn't sound quite right. Bum, amazing grace. That does sound right, so that must be a perfect fourth. Right, I only tested the perfect fifth and perfect fourth because it didn't really sound like a particularly big jump. So it, it probably wasn't an octave. So I didn't try it against somewhere over the rainbow. Now for descending intervals, we can memorize another set of songs where the melodies begin by descending with that with each particular interval. And here they are here. So for example, Old MacDonald Had a Farm begins with a descending fourth. So you could go. Bum, bum, old MacDonald. Had a farm. 
That sounds right, therefore it must be a descending perfect fourth. Alternately, you could reverse the interval and sing the ascending version. Bum, 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 bum. Amazing grace. Yep, perfect, that worked. So I sang the descending interval, then I reversed it, singing the ascending interval, then I tested it against my song list um, and found that it was indeed a perfect fourth, both down and up, funnily enough. Now for simultaneous or harmonic intervals, I find it helps if you listen to the notes quickly and then try and sing both notes while they're still playing. Now it's always easier to hear the higher note, so sing the higher note first and then try and find the lower note. And then you do the same exercise. You can sing the interval that you found either descending or ascending and again reference it back to your song list and figure out what interval it was. Twinkle, twinkle. Perfect, there it was. So I played the interval, I sang the top note, which is very clearly heard. It then played again, I quickly sang the top note again, tried to find the bottom note. Then I sang the interval descending and ascending. I tested it against one of my songs, Amazing Grace. That didn't quite sound right, therefore it couldn't have been a perfect fourth interval. Then I tested it against my next song, Twinkle Twinkle, and that did sound right. Therefore, this was a perfect fifth interval. So with that little introduction, now let's have you do this exercise. I will play 10 intervals, and you will try to determine what they are using one of the methods we discussed. All the intervals will be either a perfect fourth, perfect fifth, or perfect octave. They will all be played ascending, and they will be played twice before moving on to the next interval. And I will show you the solution to all 10 intervals at the end. So grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, and try and determine what each of these 10 intervals are. Number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Number six. Number seven. Number eight. Number nine.
number 10. And here are the solutions. Cool, so now let's do the exact same exercise, but using descending intervals. Number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Number six. Number seven. Number eight. Number nine. Number 10. And here are the solutions. And finally, Let's do the same exercise, but with harmonic intervals played simultaneously. Number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Number six. Number seven. Number eight.
number nine. Number 10. And here are the solutions. <laughs> 